stand before you today feeling very confident, steadfast, and powerful. At the same time, I am surprised that as a young African woman, I have impacted and effected the development of not only national politics, but international politics as well. It is very shocking to me that in a time of American economic recession and inner city urban chaos, Democratic presidential contender Bill Clinton has chosen to attack not the issues, but a young African woman who is very well educated, alcohol free, drug free, a successful self-employed businesswoman, and a community servant. Considerable time has been spent debating whether America should take seriously the words of a rap artist or so-called entertainers. Let me clarify for the press now who I am. I am Sister Soldier, Sony epic rapper, activist, organizer, and lecturer. I was born in the Bronx in New York City, spent the earlier part of my life there, was raised by my mother with four children, was on and off the welfare system for approximately 15 years, lived in government subsidized housing called the projects, and was classified by sociologists as being in the underclass, meaning living below the poverty line in a vicious cycle of poverty that America says cannot be broken. I supplemented my own education in the white American school system by reading African history, which was intentionally left out of the curriculum of American students. By doing so, I was able to become the well-balanced, reassured, and confident woman that I am today. I was a legislative intern at the age of 16 in the United States House of Representatives for the Republican Party and the recipient of the American Legion's Award for Constitutional Oratory and Extemporaneous Discourse. I attended Cornell University Advanced Placement Summer Session. I entered Rutgers University majoring in African Studies and History. While at Rutgers University, I attended the University of Salamanca studying abroad in Salamanca, Spain. I worked at a medical center in Zimbabwe. I have visited Mozambican refugee camps, traveled throughout the Southern African region. I have also visited and lectured in the former Soviet Union, England, France, Portugal, Finland, Holland. Moreover, at Rutgers University, I was a well-known prolific writer and political commentator in the university newspaper. I attended church in the Bronx in New York City where my great-grandmother was the pastor who recently died this year at the age of 92. While finishing up at Rutgers University, I was offered a job by Reverend Dr. Ben Chavis at the United Church of Christ Commission for Racial Justice, which is a civil rights firm sponsored by the church. I developed, organized, and financed through hip hop music, a sleepaway summer camp called the African Youth Survival Camp for children of homeless families and ran it successfully for three years. I left Rutgers University one semester prior to my my graduation. I have spoken on the same platform with Jesse Jackson, Minister Louis Farrakhan, Reverend Ben Chavis, Reverend Dr. Calvin Butts, and Nelson Mandela. As you can see, I am no newcomer to the world of politics and movement. I am mentally, spiritually, physically, emotionally, intellectually, and academically developed and acutely aware of the condition of African people throughout the entire world. My album, 360 Degrees of Power, is an amalgamation of all of my thoughts, personal and professional experiences here in America. My album was produced by Eric Sadler, one of the producers who created the music for Public Enemy, Ice Cube, and others. Any person who purchases my album will have a full understanding of what I think and believe, although it was designed specifically for the African community. I am certain that Bill Clinton was unfamiliar with me, my development and work, musical and otherwise. He chose to comment without any investigation whatsoever based on an interview in an ultra-conservative newspaper, the Washington Post, where the reporter came with a preconceived, premeditated angle, and the Post is as about as familiar with the experiences of Africans in America, inner city urban youth, and hip hop as Bill Clinton is. 
I, however, did not fail to do my research, and my research reveals the following indictment of Bill Clinton's integrity. Number one, Bill Clinton is a draft dodger who writes in a letter, thank you for saving me from the draft, and then asserts regularly on a normal basis. As president, I pledge to maintain military forces strong enough to deter and when necessary to defeat any threat to our essential interests. There are certain circumstances in which the president should consider ordering the use of force. When our vital interests or clear commitments are at stake, when we have clear achievable objectives and when there is strong support and solemn, solemn commitment. So here is a man who feels that it's all right to send your son to fight in the war but would not fight in the war himself for the principles that he says he believes in. Number two, Bill Clinton talks of morality, but admits that he was a reefer smoker who doesn't inhale. Sister Soldier has never smoked reefer and is completely drug free. Number three, Bill Clinton says he believes in a strong family unit, but could never quite get his own personal and social behavior together. His treatment and dismissal of Jennifer Flowers is indicative of how he relieves himself from his own personal responsibility and created an emotionally abusive environment to another woman. He seems to be very comfortable attacking women to Jennifer Flowers. Number four, Bill Clinton says that Sister Soldier is a racist, like David Duke, a well-known Ku Klux Klan member and white supremacist but was a member in an all-white segregated club up until this year. Bill Clinton portrays himself as compassionate, yet he supports giving prisoners lobotomies and removing a section of their brain. Bill Clinton takes shots at Dan Quayle's intellectual feasibility, yet he has not presented America with any substantive, comprehensive agenda around economic development, foreign policy, budget containment, or social policy. Bill Clinton says that he is not a racist, but he tries to distance himself from the Reverend Jesse Jackson, a candidate who has registered more vo voters than Bill Clinton, served the interests of the poor, poor blacks, poor whites, poor Latinos, unions, labor, and farms, and by experience, intellect, charisma, is far more qualified for the position than Bill Clinton himself. Therefore, we can conclude that Bill Clinton lacks integrity and paints himself as a staunch patriot people servant, a compassionate liberal, a family man, a pro-woman candidate, or a coherent scholar. He lacks integrity in all of those areas. Sister Soldier, on the other hand, was used as a vehicle, like Willie Horton, and various other black victims of racism, a poor excuse for an agenda-less candidate. Sister Soldier does not own a gun, has not shot or killed anyone, did not invade Grenada, Panama, Nicaragua, Kuwait, or Angola. Sister Soldier has not ever ordered the National Guard into anyone's community, has not made drug deals with Noriega. Sister Soldier has never been a member of a terrorist organization, has no history of crime whatsoever, has never lynched white people, burned crosses on their lawn, or hung them from trees. Sister Soldier has not systematically denied people the right to study and enjoy their culture in the so-called public educational system. Sister Soldier did not send the Haitians back to Haiti as though they were subhuman. Sister Soldier did not kill the native Indians under the guise of friendship. Sister Soldier did not cause or inspire police brutality. Did not beat Rodney King or shoot Philip Pinnell. Never shot a little white girl in the head for stealing orange juice and killed her and let her murderers go free. Sister Soldier did not vote on the Simi Valley jury and let criminal cops go free. <laughs> Sister Soldier did not create the economic conditions of South Central Los Angeles or any other urban area for that matter. Did not create an environment of ins insecurity that forced young black men into gangs. Therefore, we can conclude that Sister Soldier is not a racist, nor is any other African leader or African person in this world able to be a racist because they do not have the power to collectively and systematically beat down and destroy white people, European people. Does not have the power to deny it all, refuse to discuss it, and silence, intimidate, harass, and hunt down those who take a stand and fight back. 
Yes, I am angry, which means that I am sane. Only an uneducated and misguided African person would not be angry at the racist white transgressions of this society. The context in which my statements were made in the Washington Post was this, and I paraphrase, speaking in the mindset and in the voice of a gang member. Were you surprised at what happened in Los Angeles? No, I was not. White people should not have been surprised either. They knew that black people were dying every day in the streets of Los Angeles to gang violence created by poverty and social chaos. But they did not care. If young black men in Los Angeles would kill their own kind, their own brothers and sisters, what would make white people think that they wouldn't kill them too? Do white people think they're better, or is it that white death means so much more than black death and there is an absolute double standard? Breaking it down, this means simply the same thing that Martin Luther King Jr. said. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. As Sister Soldier, I reserve the right to fight against white racism. I have not ordered anyone to kill anyone. I do not advocate anybody killing anybody. My album creates pressure on white America, a lot of pressure, and pressure is what white America needs, deserves, and inherited. No justice, no peace. Bill Clinton, it is time for you to choose or lose like you're going to do tonight on MTV. By the way, MTV is a station where Sister Soldier's videos are banned, which means that my videos could not have provoked the situations that have occurred with black youth in the inner city urban areas because black youth were not even given the opportunity to see my videos because my videos are banned from MTV. So how could they have provoked if nobody by and large in the general hip hop audience was allowed to see them? Bill Clinton, you cannot assume that black people will automatically vote for you. You should stop expecting a handout and work to earn your vote. What is your agenda and relationship to black people in this country and African people abroad? What is your relationship to black youth beyond the patronizing gesture of picking up black babies and putting, patting them on their heads? How will you provide economic opportunity? How will you rebuild the country? Is it that you didn't know about the conditions of inner city urban America, or is it that you just didn't notice, like you didn't notice that you were in a segregated club? How will you address the Haitian issue? How will you address all issues of significance to African people in America since you are courting our votes? I would like to end my statement by saying this. What I do support is the ability of African children in this country, whether they are from Haiti, whether they are from Jamaica, whether they are from South Africa, the continent of Africa, or born here in the United States of America, to have a proper African-centered education so that they can develop self-esteem, so that they can understand how to control business and organize themselves for self-sufficiency so that they will not be dependent upon the kindness of white American society, which in so many ways has failed black people. Thank you, and I will take your questions. Yes. Right here, and then you. Will you endorse the for this presidential election, or do you intend to endorse it? Uh, could you identify, before you. Susan Howard from Newsday. I don't endorse any candidate because I think that it is a piss poor selection pool, not only for black people, but for white people as well. Um, Kate Preston, uh, NBC. Are you saying then, uh, Sister that you didn't say, I mean, if black people kill black people every day, why not have a week and kill white people? What I am saying, Mr. Pressman. Excuse me. Excuse me. Could you get out of the way? Yeah. Hang up. <laughs> what I am saying is that in that particular interview, and this is the last time I will answer that question, in that particular interview, what I was saying is that gang violence goes on in Los Angeles all the time. 
Nobody was concerned about the fact that black people were dying. When the rebellions occurred in Los Angeles, everybody ran to the hip hop community and asked us, were we surprised? I said that no, I could not possibly have been surprised because I knew that the conditions exist. I knew that nobody in political power and economic power had done anything about them. And I said, in the mindset of a gang member, once you have become casual about killing, it no longer has any color. If you would kill your own brother, or kill your grandmother, or kill a baby, well certainly you would kill anybody. In the mindset of a gang member, why not kill white people? So what I was doing was putting myself in the shoes of a gang member who had been accustomed to a hostile environment, had developed a hostile attitude and had murdered at random as a way of life, which could affect either black or white people. They were trying to shock uh, white people into doing the right thing? No, I wasn't trying to shock anybody. I was doing what I always do, which is tell the truth. Thank you. Joe Frank, is that him? Do you think um, Governor Clinton's attack on you was deliberately trying to win white votes and show white America that he can say whatever he wants to in a black audience to black folks that got him under control. I do think that Governor Clinton was trying to um, get white support. I think that he was trying to portray himself as a more conservative um, character. Um, I think it's unfortunate that he cannot get white support by telling white people what he's going to do for them, what his position. Rosemary Gomez, Channel 11. Um, the rapper Ice-T says the fact that rap I think that America has a fundamental fear of young black men and that anytime young black men are talking loud or revealing the inconsistencies and con contradictions of this system and this government, it's considered a threat music or the racist music of, of, of white musicians. Excuse me, Mr. Okay. I have two questions for you. We're from CBS News. The first, the first question is, you seem to be saying that Bill Clinton is out of touch with the black community. Right. Do you think he is less or more out of touch with the black community than Mr. Perot or Mr. Bush? I think that they're all out of touch, to be honest with you. I mean, people have to understand that when you grow up in an inner city urban environment, you're not going to have the same mindset as a multi-billion dollar person or as a former CIA director like George Bush or the same mindset of a, of a Bill Clinton. It is absolutely impossible and the only thing that is going to foster a good relationship between the young population and people like Clinton, Bush and Perot is communication based on action. Because for so long we've heard politicians say they're going to do something and they have delivered absolutely nothing. And they have had a hostile, preconceived, premeditated, philosophical stand towards young black people, which is very, you know, nasty. I okay, I question? wanted to go over. Can I ask you another question? I'm just interested in your perspective on this. Sort of, some of us think wacky election year when we have a vice president attack an articulate sitcom character and we have a democratic presidential candidate attack an articulate rap singer. What's going on here? I think that I am being attacked and singled out because people know that I am well-rounded in my development and I think that anytime anybody takes a strong stand for African people in this country and African people abroad, they are beat down by whites in power and whites in the media system.